Hi everybody, my name is Matthew Pose. This is Pose Acoustics, and we're doing more videos on video. So, um, as many of you know, I recently reviewed a bunch of Christie projectors, and the, the big revelation of that was basically I liked them way more than I expected to like them, and I found myself preferring qualities in a projector that are not what I had expected to prefer because they're not what I've been drawn to in the past. Um, so, in the past, when I've used projectors that were higher in brightness but lower in contrast, um, and worse in color, I found myself going back to projectors that had, or not worse in color, but let's say no better in color. I found myself going back to the projectors that had the equally good color, good enough sharpness, but much, much better contrast. Um, even though they weren't as bright, because for SDR content, it just didn't seem to matter. And with HDR content, the boost in brightness seemed to be sufficient enough that it didn't really affect things, I thought. And yeah, I saw these projectors in installs we did a lot, and I saw what they could do. But I think not having it in my own home environment and being able to just sit and watch a whole movie, I wasn't being as critical and wasn't recognizing the benefits. So once I got it here, I did, which raised a whole lot of questions. So this video is actually going to be on ANSI contrast. So in our RP23 committee, we've been talking a lot about the importance of being able to predict ANSI contrast in a room because the ANSI contrast you would get off the lens is going to be many times higher than the ANSI contrast you're going to get in the room. Sequential contrast typically in a room, unless there's a light control problem, is going to be as good as the projector is capable of, because when the projector dims down to its darkest settings, unless it's really, really bad and it's got a pretty high black floor, the surfaces in the room are not going to be making things much worse. But ANSI contrast and inter-image contrast is going to be made worse by the room and the screen and the surface materials and everything. Like the, All of this contributes in, in critical ways. Even Things like the glass, the scattering effect of the port window can affect ANSI contrast. And so we started looking at documents that talk about how to predict this and how to look at the effects on ANSI contrast that these different things have and how important it is that you don't have too many layers of glass and the right kind of glass that you're using in those port windows. But then what wasn't in those papers and we're recognizing is important is the materials in the room. So my room is a good example of one that's compromised but not that badly. My floor is a hard faux marble look floor, and it has a satin finish. It's not a shiny finish, but it is a satin finish and not a matte finish. So, you know, this black velvety material here, get my hand back in the camera view, there we go, um, that doesn't reflect a lot of light back. And if I had that on the floors, something like this would probably not have a negative effect on the ANSI contrast that much. But the satin floor might because it does still have enough of a sheen that there could be some light that, that goes back onto the screen with an ANSI contrast. ANSI contrast, for those who don't know, has these blocks on the screen that creates a 50-50 image of black and white. And it allows you to see what it would be like with more mixed content. <clears throat> so the thing is, we think of it in terms of like ANSI contrast, but a anything that has any light on the screen, and any like once you get to APL levels that are 5%, maybe even less than that, the room starts to have a more significant effect. And when you look at, I actually, so I'll see if I can get these and I'm going to try to pull them off my email so I can put them into this video. So somebody actually went and looked at a couple of movies and in these movies they laid out on like a scene by scene basis the number of scenes that had a, they, they actually measured the average, I think they called it ADL instead, but it's the same, same concept. The average light level, the luminance level of the, of the scene. And then it, it created like a bar graph that showed how many fell into each percentage. And what you'll find is that of the two that they tested, one of which was more typical of movies that would have very dark scenes. The other was, I think, an animated film that wouldn't have had a lot of dark scenes. But one of them had no scenes at all that were all black and very, very few that were low, uh, low average luminance levels. Most of them were higher up. Uh, what, I would say kind of to the midpoint and above, meaning that kind of film is going to look best on a projector like the Christie I reviewed. The other film that was looked at did have darker scenes, but interestingly, it was still a tiny percentage of the total. The vast majority of the scenes fell into the middle. It was sort of a normal curve, but one of them was, a, was not a normal curve and it was skewed heavily towards brighter scenes. And this one was more of a normal curve period with not as many of those brighter scenes, but I'd still say it was slightly skewed to the right towards the brighter scenes. 
And it would be interesting to do this with dozens of movies. Like I'd really like to have, I don't personally have the skill set to do, I probably could figure it out, but I don't know how to do this and calculate this the way this individual did, but it'd be neat to be able to do this with like a dozen movies of different specific types to show this off and to see. But I think what this showed and what I'm kind of getting at here is that intra-image contrast, ANSI contrast, things where there is a mix of stuff, even if it's mostly dark, the ability to have that have high contrast is really more important than sequential. Not just because of tricks, because there are projectors that have very, very good native on-off contrast that still don't do very good with these mixed scenes, or at least not as good as some of the other projectors. And so being able to look at what normal content really is, look at what the projectors actually are good at, I think is better. And so there's sort of two things I wanted this video to cover. One was just the idea of being able to understand the effects of the room on ANSI contrast. Because if you're buying projectors that have very, very good contrast, very good black levels, and also very good intra-image contrast, and you're sticking them in a white room, you're compromising seriously. It's like a waste of money at that point. But even if the room is pretty dark, like this one is, and you haven't done a good job though creating what I call light traps, so ways to make sure that the light still doesn't get reflected back on the screen from the surfaces you can still have a situation where you're compromising it. Now in my case, when we measured anti-contrast off the screen, what we found was that it was in line with what had been seen in other good environments and was as good as anybody had measured. So the assumption was the room, in my case, didn't actually negatively contribute. Having said that, it would be interesting. I just I don't I didn't have like rolls of velvet around to do this. It would be interesting to like completely wrap the room temporarily in velvet and remeasure ANSI on one of these better projectors and see what happens. If I get to a point where I can do that in the future, we'll try it. It might have improved things a little bit. I don't know. Um, I am. But I, get, I think the point, though, is that it would be good to get to a point where we can predict what the effect of these materials are. So we could say to somebody, well, because it, I don't think it's just about the sheen. You know, black paint that is relatively um, low sheen, dull paint, can still reflect light back on a screen. It wouldn't be a lot, but it would be enough to throw off something like an ANSI contrast. Whereas a textured surface probably is going to reflect less back. So I have these diffusers. Why well, I keep looking over? I have these diffusers that have like a textured surface. In all likelihood, the light that hits those doesn't reflect back to the screen in the same way. They act as a natural light trap. Velvet is a very good light trap. Certain types of angled panels can be very good light traps, but these are all important design criteria to consider when trying to maximize image quality. And they can actually become neat design features. So the things you do to maximize the intra-image contrast also has the benefit of becoming a cool design feature in the room. Now, the other thing I was thinking about with this was how important it is that we actually get data from manufacturers and maybe from reviewers too that shows what a projector's contrast ratio is under different average light levels, average luminance levels, from 0%, which is on off, all the way up to 50%. I don't know that we need to go past 50%. I think that that probably is good enough, including what tends to happen is it plateaus and it just stays level all the way beyond that. Um, so, but it, we, I, there are people who have done this and I'll throw the data up that I got from uh, a person that I've worked with, Nigel Archer, um, he had sent me some stuff from his company, Absolute Ultimate AV, where they had measured a couple of projectors. One of them was a Sony 380Z, one was a JVC NZ9, um, another one was a Barco, I think it was Njord, and then a Christie, I believe it was, I don't remember the model now, the Griffin, I think, and it had the AS lens, which is a modified lens to enhance contrast. The unmodified version, I believe, would still have measured better than the Niord for what it's worth in terms of contrast, but would have been closer to that than it was probably to where it came out, which looked really good, you know, spec-wise. Uh, it, it'll do about somewhere between five and 7,000 to one contrast, depending on the setup and the lens and everything you get uh, on its own without the special lens. The special lens raises that up to somewhere between 10 and 15,000 to one. So it's a pretty sizable bump up in contrast uh, and then when you look at how, but the thing that's so interesting is the point at which that projector surpasses the other two with better black levels. So the Sony 380Z and the JVC NZ9, most people will be like, wow, it's superior, right? What happens though with those two projectors is that they clearly have better on-off contrast and then it quickly goes down and goes down quite a bit. And as they get towards the ANSI, they're quite low. But with this Christie and to some extent the Barco, 
it starts at a lower point, but it, it kind of settles at a much higher point and stays there. And so in the case of the Barco, you've got to be at about 5 to 8%, I think, somewhere in that range before it surpasses the other projectors. The Christie surpassed it by 1%. So by 1% average luminance, it had higher contrast than either the JVC or the Sony. Um, the JVC, it might have been like 1.5% or something, but it was way down there, which means that basically unless it was a really, really dark scene, that Christie would have had a better, higher contrast, more contrasty image. Um, or the same. I mean, I assume surpassed it. They were the same in that range, and then it would have been slightly better, and then it got better, better. So they would, it would have a similar image to the JVC at, let's say, between 1% and 2 or 3%, because they're pretty close to each other at that point. And then they would start to come apart where then the Christie would be um, looking better and better and better. It's interesting looking. So the, the king of projectors is the Christie Eclipse. There is no better projector when it comes to contrast. Um, I... I've heard people argue that it's not good in other things. I don't, I don't have enough experience with it to be able to say that because it's, it's such a unicorn of a projector. They're not very common. I have a bunch of projects that they're going into, but I haven't actually had an opportunity to really see one. Again, it's like one of those, just because it went into a room you worked on doesn't mean you got to sit there and watch a movie on it. So I'm hoping to get some more time with them. But um, in these particular projects, I probably will get that time and then have better opportunity to see what they're like. But as far as I can tell, they're as good as the best projectors on the market in terms of color, sharpness, etc. with the advantage of having way better. It's 20 million to one contrast, and that's not using weird trickery. So I've had some people try to argue that it's not really as good as it claims to be because they're doing this, you know, it uses two DLP chips per color. And so they're doing these tricks. But it's not trickery like the laser isn't being dimmed to achieve that. There's no iris being open and closed. It's not like the white level gets brought down in order to get the black level that low. Um, instead, it's able to create a much more contrasty image natively where it maintains those really bright highlights and has a really, really dark black floor. It is as good as it gets. It's better than any other projector on the market. Um, you know, its contrast ratio is extremely high. The room becomes by far the dominant factor with that projector. And you have to be very, very careful with how you design rooms for that projector. And one of the big challenges, which is what I'm kind of getting at here, is it's really hard to predict ahead of time what the room design needs to be like. You're kind of guessing and then hoping when it's all put together that it's right. So you might argue, well, just make it so it's got a black velvet floor, black velvet walls, black velvet ceiling, black velvet seats. You know, everybody gets a black velvet blanket to stick on themselves and then you're good to go, right? But that's ridiculous. Nobody wants to be in a room like that. Those rooms are ugly. They're difficult to be in. They're not comfortable. They're very one purpose. So how do you design a room that can achieve 99% of that performance without all of those limitations? So the work that we're doing in this committee, I think is going to lead to some additional work that some of us are going to do trying to get better at predicting these things and then designing rooms around that. I think that's going to be a huge thing. But then with projectors, I'd really like to see manufacturers start to report this data where it tracks the contrast ratio over different average luminance levels uh, for images and that we can use that as part of this. Because to me, that's a bigger distinguishing factor than just the two numbers we typically see. We typically see on-off contrast and we see... Uh, ANSI contrast. And to me, that's just not enough. I want those graphs. And as I said, I think we need to also start analyzing movies more and seeing what's normal in the movie because it'll help us to better understand. The other thing that probably deserves its own video and I'm still trying to understand better is color saturation at different ADLs or different APLs. Apparently, they're not all the same. And it is normal that as an image gets darker, I mean, even our eyes desaturate the image as it gets darker. So it's normal that projectors will do that too. But as I understand it, a lot of projectors can desaturate much more significantly than you would want them to at both ends of the scale. So it, when they're at their brightest, there can be some desaturation, but also when they're at their dimmest. And it can get to a point where it affects negatively the picture quality. Other projectors are much better at that. So it would be better to start seeing, um, I think, data that helps us to understand how these projectors perform given how dynamic they are in their performance. So, you know, just a couple of specs doesn't really tell us that much about the projector. We need more information. RP1 within CDA's job is actually to do that. But I think we're starting to get into facts, if you will, projector facts that don't have names yet, or they do, but they don't have standard measures that have been identified. And we may need to start to figure out what that is. I'm hoping to have conversations with folks um, over the next couple of weeks who are experts in this more so than I am to help me better understand 
what those measures specifically would be and how we could start to better understand them to create standards around that. Because one of the neat things that happens, as you guys know, is once we put a measure to it and once we start to create interest in it, then it helps to drive performance. So it's easy to make a projector have a billion to one contrast. You just turn the light source off when it's a black screen. That's not a hard thing to achieve. But all of you, I would hope, understand that's a meaningless data point. That doesn't tell us anything about what it performs like with real content because we don't care about being able to turn the laser off when there's a black image. We care about what it looks like when there's just a little bit of light. You know, one of the things that uh, John Bishop had mentioned in this email exchange we were all having, and I thought it was a really important and interesting point, was the compromises you make. A projector that is able to get really dark sometimes has an issue where the light stuff becomes dark too. And so take a star scene. So he was specifically referring to star scenes. He said, I would much rather see the Milky Way the way it's supposed to be seen and all the stars around it and have a raised black floor so that black of space isn't as black as it's supposed to be than to have the black of space be much darker and look the way it's supposed to be, but to have much less of those star points in space and a much less vivid looking Milky Way. And I think that there's a lot of truth to that. But again, I think we need to push our industry to do better in providing us with projectors that are capable of doing both. That's where I think things need to go. Anyway, I hope you found this video interesting and um, keep on watching. I got more coming, so thanks.